welcome to the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception to worship the Lord in the holy sacrifice of the Mass for the fourth Sunday in ordinary time. Out of respect for the Holy Mass, please silence your phone at this time. Our entrance hymn is Christ is Made the Sure Foundation, number 732 in the Red Worship Hymnal, number 732. Please stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. in what I have done and what I fall through my fault. My most holy soul, therefore I ask you to sin. All the angels and sins. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility. Perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. It is the who preserves fidelity forever, who does justice to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the the eyes of the blind, the Lord who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the Holds the orphan and the widow, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, the God of Zion from age to age. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong, and God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, 
to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the children of God. They will be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and that utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. As you reflect on this last week, what would you say your goals were? Sometimes simply our goals are just getting out of bed on time, showing up to work on time, and just surviving. But what would you say those more underlying goals were? What were you really trying to achieve this week? Maybe you had some goals at work to achieve. Maybe you were simply trying to keep your your family happy. Maybe you were trying to get organized. Any such goal as that. What about the eight Beatitudes we just heard? Do those enter into your mind this week? Were those any part of your goal at all, maybe consciously or subconsciously. As I kind of reflected on that when reading this gospel, it kind of hit me in between the eyes. So I thought, wow, I don't know the last time was when I thought about these eight Beatitudes. Hopefully I'm living them out subconsciously without knowing it. Hopefully they're natural. But it's something I thought, I need to work on this more. And it would have even been the same for the people who were listening to Jesus at the time. This is starting his Sermon on the Mount, and he's really starting out strong here, really raising the bar, but for them it wouldn't have been on their mind at all. Because for them, they would have been used to practicing the Ten Commandments. That would have been their goal. But Jesus is really upping the ante here. And some of them would have thought, wow, I I thought my goal was supposed to be the Ten Commandments. And maybe some of them thought, this is too hard. I can't do this. When we read it in the Gospel... So the Gospels were written in Greek, that was the original language, and the word for beatitude or blessed is makarios. And what that word means 
is being blessed or being praised for being in a privileged or even an enviable state. I think once again that comes as a surprise. How could any of these things be, be envied by anybody? Why would somebody envy us for mourning or for being poor in spirit or for being meek? What's enviable about that? I think we'll see why. But first of all, it's because Jesus is promising heaven to these people. Basically, all those promises involve heaven, involve eternal life. And really, heaven, if you think of it in a certain sense, is the most enviable of all things. Because that's what we should all want. That's being truly rich. You know, the eight Beatitudes are something that we know is good, but we don't really understand them. I was debating whether I thought, well, I want to explain these. I thought, well, it might be kind of boring, but I thought, really, actually, I think it's good, and I think it can be an examination of conscience. So as I go through these eight Beatitudes, really listen. Listen with your heart. Listen to the voice of the Lord. See what he's asking you to work on, seeing maybe which ones prick your conscience, because, well, they might all, but it will help us reorient ourselves. When Jesus talks about being poor in spirit, Really what that means is not having enough spiritually. Well, that's all of us. All of us come up short when it comes to what it takes to be in relationship with God. But being poor in spirit means that we rely on him. We realize we're poor and we rely on him. The opposite of that is to see our spiritual poverty and to to give up. Or to think we can do it by ourselves. So being poor in spirit is recognize our poverty and relying on God. To mourn doesn't mean to cry. What it means is to grieve over our wickedness. It could be in ourselves or or in others. But as we grieve, it's having hope. Having hope that the Lord can turn it around, turn our sin around, or those of others, or even society. It doesn't give in to hopelessness, nor does it turn a blind eye to our sin. To be meek means that in times of affliction, We patiently wait on the Lord. We don't lose hope. We don't cower. Nor do we respond in anger. But we wait patiently. To hunger and thirst for righteousness means to seek to act with virtue in all times. And I really like this one because if you think of somebody who's hungry or thirsty, like that is the thing they're going to pursue. They want that food. They want that drink because they need it. They need it to survive. It becomes the number one priority. And so that's how it should be for virtue, for righteousness. That that should be our number one priority. We should seek virtue like where our life depends on it. To be merciful, this one's easy to understand, means to be loving and understanding towards people despite their defects and helping them or simply spending time with them. It doesn't get annoyed or it doesn't avoid them. And it doesn't complain to others about them. Something that's simple, but but something that's really hard to practice. To be clean of heart. This one, I think, is when we read it, it doesn't really make much sense. But really what it means is loving God with an undivided heart. Loving God above ourselves and above others, really in response to his great love for us. Those who are clean of heart, God is their number one treasure of their life. And nothing else is above him. To be a peacemaker is pretty easy. It's one who fosters peace in their own hearts and with others. But they don't sweep conflict out of the rug, but they seek towards forgiveness and reconciliation. And the last one, to be persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Those who are righteous, they are pursuing holiness. But maybe they're persecuted because of it. And they continue to pursue holiness anyways. And they patiently and joyfully suffer in that persecution. Because there's time that when choosing God means making uncompromised choices that have real-life consequences. These people pick God before all else. Even into the end, if, if that's what it takes. So there it is. Those are the eight Beatitudes. That's hard, isn't it? I mean, maybe even to be doing one or two of those well would be impressive. That's a hard list. But if we look at the life of Jesus, 
He lived those perfectly, to a T. And he can help us. And it might make us recognize the first beatitude, that we're poor in spirit. We don't have what it takes. So what do we do? We rely on Jesus. He's our Savior. We rely on him with hope that through the grace of the sacraments and prayer that we can get to that point where we can start checking off these eight beatitudes. But it is hard. But if you think of people who have these or people who have exemplified these, the saints, Jesus, how beautiful are their, are their lives? They have beautiful lives. Everything just seems to be smooth and perfect and to work the way it needs to. And actually, maybe even they're living life in an enviable way where we look at it and go, wow, I want that. There's something attractive about, attractive about that. There's something in us that want to live the eight Beatitudes because that's how we were made. They can change our life. It's something to reflect on. Maybe even taking this gospel, printing it out, and looking at it every day, using it as maybe an examination of conscience at the end of the night, and to see which Beatitudes you did well, and to give thanks to God for that, and to ask God for his help to grow in those other ones. How good would our lives be and our families if we cultivated those eight Beatitudes? If we do that, we can have a beautiful life. But how about for just this week? Does just this week maybe pick one or two of those to work on to see what the Lord is calling us to, to make us, to make those our goals? And I promise we will have beautiful and good weeks. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in one God. Relying on the Lord who gives us all good things. We present to him our prayers and our needs. That the church may proclaim the Beatitudes with clarity and live them with fidelity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders of the world will work to end war and work towards justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, that the Lord will bless and strengthen them to remain united in peace and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all Catholic schools, especially during this Catholic Schools Week, that they may grow ever stronger in their mission to impart knowledge and faith and to enable our children to be disciples of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may find comfort in the lesson of the Beatitudes and that in their suffering and loneliness, they may find the Lord's consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have gone before us in death may be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom and for the repose of the soul of Justin Ross, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, we offer all these prayers and petitions before you. We ask all these things with confidence, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice of your name. Praise the glory of his name. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you have loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. So, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension in heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, our spouse, through blessed apostles and glorious martyrs with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, Carl our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, who are departed brothers and sisters, and do all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
You have kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who uh, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who you said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. I'm of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is number 700 in the worship hymnal. Will charity and love prevail? Number 700.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase, 
Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the announcements. As I mentioned in my homily, we start the uh, Sermon on the Mount, and we'll be hearing that in the next couple Sundays until Lent. Um, since it's so good and so important, we thought we'd make it available to you guys. Um, on the monitors in the, the gathering space, uh, there's a QR code for that if you see it come across the screen. Also, in our weekly email we send, uh, there's a way to access it as well. You can access the audio file to listen to it, maybe when you're around the house doing stuff, or driving, or also we have the, the, the text version as well. Uh, so if you want to listen to that, maybe especially focus this week on the Beatitudes, uh, but then to kind of look at what's coming up uh, the next couple weeks on that. Just a reminder, we're going to have an altar server training today at 2 o'clock until 4. Uh, this is for all altar servers who are currently servers. Um, there's just a way for us to train you more and more uh, so that you can get better and better. Uh, and we have pizza afterwards, so can't argue with that. You've heard us making announcements a lot about the Acts Retreats. You might be tired of us talking about it by now, uh, but it's something that's just so good. And I've said it before, but it's something that Father Kyder and I really believe can transform our parish uh, to make it even better than, than what it is now. Uh, last August, I, I went on the retreat with the men, and it was just, it was just incredible. It was just hard to put into words. And it really created a bond between all of us. Uh, one of those guys that was on the retreat was Eduardo Banuelos. Uh, and he's here today to tell us about the retreat uh, and to invite you uh, to consider attending the retreat. So let's give uh, him our undivided attention as he talks to us about that. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Father. First of all, I would like to thank our Lord Jesus Christ for giving me the opportunity to come speak to all of you today. My name is Eduardo Bañuelos, but you can call me Junior. I have been a parishioner here at the cathedral for many years since I was a child. I'm here to tell you a little bit about ACTS Retreat that will be coming up soon. ACTS stands for Adoration, our praise, worship, and devotion to God community, our love and caring for each other, theology, our study of God through scripture and tradition, service, our prayer assistance to our brothers and sisters in Christ, acts as a three-day, three-night Catholic retreat designed to reunite our faith and bring us closer to God and our fellow parishioners. This retreat is an amazing experience. I want to invite you to experience this opportunity as well. I have participated in acts one as a retreatant and now as a team member. This retreat completely changed my life and has brought me closer to my faith. I am sure like you I had my doubts about attending, but man was I wrong, and I mean I was wrong. I do not regret going at all. It was amazing. During this retreat, the Holy Spirit graced me with an abundance of peace and a newfound brotherhood. This retreat would be held on February 23rd at Camp Tawakini in Augusta, Kansas for the men and for the women on February 9th. So if you're interested in joining us and you're 18 years or older, or if you know of someone who would greatly benefit from this retreat, I and some of my brothers and sisters in Christ will be in the gathering spaces to answer any questions that you may have. The cost of the retreat is $150 per parishioner $200 for non-parishioners, but please know that financial difficulties should not prevent anyone from attending. We can help, and I mean it, we can help you. Again, I would ask you to pray on this because it's, it's a life changer, not only for you, but for your entire family. Thank you all, and God bless. Thank you, Eduardo. There's so much good to say about it, but just, just go. Just go to the retreat. You won't regret it. If you regret it, you can blame me and say it was a terrible retreat, uh, but I don't think you will. Uh, if you want to sign up or you have any questions about any of the details or logistics, uh, there's a table here in the gathering space. Uh, you can, they'll be there. You can talk to them about that. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
Our closing hymn is number 742 in the worship hymnal. O blessed are you, number 742. Thank you. 